Good afternoon, everyone, on this beautiful day um, here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We are so glad that you've joined us for our session on debt repayment with our partners at HUCTW. Um, and I would like to introduce you all to Danielle, who is going to speak a little bit more about HUCTW and our partnership. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for logging in and joining us today. Um, many of you might know that HUCTW and the credit union have an ongoing partnership to offer these financial education workshops to all of our members. Um, we have de debt repayment today. And also, as we were planning the rest of 2021, we've incorporated a couple of events specifically geared towards needs people might be experiencing newly during the pandemic. Um, one on buying a car as people's transportation habits are changing, and then later in the year, one on HELOCs and home refinancing, as we've gotten a lot of questions about that. Um, we are really grateful to Sarah and Migdalia for their time helping create this, and also to the whole credit union for this partnership. Thanks, everyone, for being here today. Excited to learn more about this. Thank you, Danielle. Um, and like Danielle said, this partnership definitely has quite a few sessions in our series for this year, and we actually have them planned out all the way until November. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about our partnership or signing up and registering for others, you can always go to our website, huecu.org slash huctw, and you can find the registration links for all of those there. Um, and then I'm sure you'll be getting an email in your inbox before those sessions happen. So we're glad you've joined us today for debt repayment. Before we get started on all of our content today, we really just want to get us oriented to GoToWebinar. For today's webinar, we've gone ahead and muted everybody who is not presenting. This way, you can eat lunch if you need to. You can continue doing work if you need to. Um, hopefully, this gives you a little more flexibility um, to be able to interact with us in a different way, which is through the questions feature or the chat feature. This feature is either gonna be found on the right-hand side of your screen or at the top navigation of your screen, depends on how you logged in and what device you're using. But we wanna make sure, number one, that you can hear us, and number two, that you know how to use the questions feature. So if you could let us know where you are joining us from today in the questions feature, that way we know you know where it is and how to ask questions um, during our time together. So if you could just put in the questions box or chat box where you are joining us from today, and I'll wait for a couple of those as I talk through the next things, which is that you will be receiving this presentation and recording in a follow-up email tomorrow um, or the next day. Uh, but that way you all have this information if you, you know, miss us talking about a specific thing that you wanted to learn more about. Hopefully you can go back and watch this um, and you will have access to this again through an email that we will um, send out to you all. So check your emails for that. Um, see that a lot of people found the questions box. Great. Some people are joining us from Acton, Jamaica Plain, Somerville, Cambridge. Brighton, Boston, wonderful. We've got people all over the place. Great, awesome. So glad to have you all here. And that is where you can ask questions throughout our presentation. Please don't hesitate to put any questions that you have there. Um, and we will either answer them when they come in or towards the end of our webinar. Again, my name is Sarah Scruggs. I'm the Community Engagement Specialist at the Credit Union. And Migdalia Gomez, the Community Engagement Manager at Harvard University Employees Credit Union, will be taking over for me about halfway through our presentation today. So please know that we are here to answer any questions that you might have, not only about the credit union, but about debt repayment. At the credit union, we are Harvard's not-for-profit financial institution, so we exclusively serve the Harvard community. That means all of our products, all of our services are based around um, our community here at Harvard. And we believe that we have better value, better service, better business model, and that we're better for the community. Um, and if you have questions about becoming a member or um, any products that we offer, we're happy to answer those as well. But please know um, if there are questions that you have, we are here to help. So the first thing that we need to do before we really talk about the ins and outs of debt repayment strategies is think about our debt right at this point. Um, and to be honest with you, this is not always a super fun experience for people um, to think about, okay, 
where am I right now in not only just my debt repayment, but also overall um, with my financial journey? Where am I? Do I have a budget? Have I made sure that I have an emergency fund? Have I made sure that um, I'm able to pay my bills on time? Have I made sure that I'm able to pay all of my debts on time each month as well? Those are things that you really need to check in about um, at, with yourself at this point and also with those in your family, um, making sure that you understand where you are and that you understand, okay, this, this is where I am now and what goals do I have in the future for myself and for my family for our financial journey together? So what are your goals? What are your goals when you think about that? Why are you coming to a presentation about debt repayment? Most of you, it's going to be because you want to pay down your debt. You want to learn more strategies. You want to be a part of that. And so I want you to think through, what are my overall goals for paying off debt? What are my overall goals for paying off debt? Probably for a lot of us, it's to be able to feel like we're in more control of our money and that we're able to have more money to do things that we want to do rather than just paying someone else. So I hope that you can set up this goal because I think it's so important to have a goal in mind because if we don't, then we're really working towards nothing. So if we fall off the wagon or we're like, eh, I'm not really interested anymore, we don't have anything bringing us back. And it, it's been researched quite a bit. When you write down a goal, you're actually much more likely to reach it. So I hope that you're able to write down at least one goal when you've thought about it today. Maybe you don't really have a good idea in your head of what could be a good goal for me. Our partners at Green Path Financial Wellness have put together an Aligning Priorities booklet. This is for those of you who are really looking for it to be laid out very clearly about how to set goals um, and align those priorities to make sure your priorities are in order to reach those goals. This handout is included in our GoToWebinar today, so you are more than welcome to download it now. Um, I will also make sure that it is included in our email um, so that you're able to have access to this. But this is a great resource for those of you who really have, um, have more difficulties finding out what are my priorities? Where do they lie when I wanna reach these specific goals? So I encourage you to use this resource if that would be helpful. And like I said, you really need to figure out where are you in this journey? The first being, what do you owe? A lot of us have come here today. Some of us may know, okay, these are the debts that I have, and this is how much I pay each month. And then there may be some of us who say, you know, I set up an automatic payment quite some time ago, and I really don't know what's left on that loan or how much more time I have to pay it. Um, so this is really a time to reorient yourself and say, okay, I'm going to know exactly what these things are so that then I can make a strategy moving forward. So I highly encourage you sitting down, whether it be this weekend, maybe you have some time in the evening, um, or maybe during a lunch break this week, sit down and really think about what do I owe? Find out how much money you owe um, in loans. This may be a really large number for some of us who may have mortgages um, or car loans or student loans, but it's important to see that number. And then what's your credit score? If you've never checked your credit score, now is a great time to do it. I highly recommend that you know your credit score. Why is this important for debt repayment? It's important because if you decide one of your strategies moving forward is to refinance, then you need to know your credit score so that you can pick the best option for you um, when you're thinking about refinancing. So highly recommend figuring out that credit score. One of the best places to find your credit score is through your credit card company. So let's say that you have a credit card. I know myself, I have a credit card and on my credit card app, it actually tells me every week the little updates of like, this is your credit score. Um, and so that's really nice. If you don't have a credit card just yet, you can check your credit score in other places. I would recommend starting with your financial institution, seeing if they offer that free service to you. And then calculating the cost of your debt. This process 
can be really overwhelming for a lot of people. I highly recommend doing it though, because this gives you a clear picture of how much money you're actually paying to own that debt, to have that debt. And this can be a motivating number for us to see how much we're paying just for somebody else to give us, to lend us money can be a motivating number for us to be able to pay that off so that we're no longer paying on that. Well, how do you calculate the cost of your debt? We have two loans here in our example, um, and we've laid out the amount of that loan. So we, we took out a $10,000 loan and a $5,000 loan. And then we have the interest rates beside it. You'll wanna do this for each, each one that you see. You lay out the terms. How long will you be paying back this loan? How much is your monthly payment? And then one thing to calculate, and the reason why we're calculating this, is we wanna see how much interest we will pay over time, over the whole life of the loan. That's what we would call the full term, so the life of the loan. How much interest is paid? One of the easiest ways to do this is by using the calculators on the credit union's website. We did all of our calculations using those calculators. Um, and you can find those on our website at huecu.org slash calculators. And I bet McDalia is putting it in the chat now. Um, but that way you all can calculate this on your own for each of your personal debts. And the number that we wanna come to is all of our loans together, how much interest are we paying and how much are we paying per month? The one that's impacting us quite a bit right now is monthly payment. How much are we paying per month on these loans? This will also tell us whether in our budget there's enough money to pay additional amounts per month, or maybe there's enough money, um, or maybe you want to start strategizing. This is where that would begin. You really don't know if you have additional money in your budget to cover additional monthly payment if you don't know how much your monthly payment is right now. So that's why we really wanna calculate that important number. And then we also see the total interest. Of these two loans, we've added them together. Over the life of each of these loans, we're gonna be paying over $6,000, almost $7,000 in interest. So that's not on the principal, that's just an interest. So that can be a motivating number for a few of us to be able to say, okay, if I pay it off early, maybe I'm not paying a full $7,000 in interest. Maybe I'm paying a little bit less. Like I said, this is not the most fun activity to do. So I highly recommend pairing it with a fun activity that you like to do. Maybe it's going outside on a gorgeous day, but also taking your laptop and looking up the debts that you do have and adding them all up using our calculators, uh, but getting to do it in the sunshine. Pair this up with something that you enjoy doing so that you're able to actually do it and motivate yourself to get it done. Sarah, so, before we go oh, on to our next step, uh, there was a question that came in. Are there ways of tracking down unknown or old debts? That is a good question. What you need to do, kind of like what we talked about with credit score, our credit actually has a lot to do with the debts that we hold. So if you have never looked at your credit report, which is a full on huge document a lot of times that tells us every single loan or time that we've borrowed, including a credit card, including any um, standard loans, which would be things like car loan, student loan, mortgage, as well as any other collections that we may have had on our account. Those are listed on our credit report, which is tied to our social security number. You can look, go see your credit report at annualcreditreport.com. This, you can see it there for free once a week. You probably don't need to look at it once a week. Uh, I think once every three months is about the norm that I would recommend, but go and view your credit report. This will have all of those loans, all of those debts, all of those credit cards listed in one place and it's tied to your social security number. So this is a personalized report for you. And if you've never looked at your credit report before and you would like some help looking through it for the first time, 
Our partners at Green Path Financial Wellness are actually accredited credit counselors and can talk you through your credit report. So I highly recommend that service as well. Any other questions, Magdalia? No other questions at this moment, thank you. Okay, awesome, that's a great question. Thank you for that. And I think it opens up a lot of um, interesting topics too around credit and making sure that our credit is where we want it to be. So definitely check your credit report. Uh, that's a good place to start as well. Debt repayment strategies. We've gotten to the point where step one, we've listed out everything. We know our monthly payments. We know moving forward how much we'll be paying in interest. So what can we do to possibly put our additional money or cash that we have in our budget towards the correct debts for us? This is a very personal process. So not everybody's strategy is going to be the same. And that's why we're gonna share with you two right now. And um, the first being the snowball method. The snowball method is just like a snowball. You're starting off little and then making it larger. So with this method, you would focus on the smallest amount of debt first. So let's say, as an example, you have three loans. You have a $1,000 loan at 8% interest. You have a $5,000 loan at 3% interest. And you have a $10,000 loan at 7% um, interest. With the snowball method, you would put any additional funds per month towards the smallest amount of debt, which is the $1,000 loan. You are just looking at the dollar amounts when you think about the snowball method. You're gonna focus on the smallest amount of debt, but the first step is that you have to make minimum payments on all of your debts. So we can't just stop paying on our other debts to pay down one of the other ones. We just need to use any extra payments that we might have on our smallest loan first. When that one is paid off, you move to the next smallest loan debt. So with this method, what it's helping you do is reach goals a little bit quicker. I don't know if you're anything like me. I love to be motivated by um, external factors. So uh, for myself, if there is like some random competition out there, like right now we're doing March Madness with all of my friends and our brackets. We know nothing about basketball. We haven't watched a game, but <laughs> there's this just external like, oh, I wanna beat somebody at something. Um, and with Snowball Method, you're kind of gaining those wins a little bit at a time. So each time a team wins or loses, my bracket points go up or they stay the same. So I'm feeling that motivation to finish it off. So your large goal over time will be to pay off all your debt. That's a goal of all of ours. But some of us, that may be 40, 50, 60 years down the line. <laughs> and so we want to focus on the smallest debt so we can have those small wins that will keep us motivated moving forward. So this is definitely a method if you're one of those people that is highly motivated when you're reaching those small goals, just like me. Another method is the avalanche. The avalanche method focuses on the highest interest rate. The highest interest rate. The reason that this is, is because if you're paying on the highest interest loan, this could save you money over time. A lot of times, these will be, take much longer to pay off. And so the difference between the snowball and the avalanche method is that with snowball, we're really focusing on our own motivation to be able to pay off these debts a little bit quicker. But with avalanche, we're focusing on the motivation of saving a little bit of money, but it possibly taking quite a long time. Again, you're making the minimum monthly payments, but that extra payment that you possibly have is going towards the highest interest debt that you hold. And then when you've paid that off, you move to the next debt with the highest interest rate. Both of these methods 
are extremely valid. So 100% get that. Tell me in our poll that we just posted, what method intrigues you the most or are you most interested in? What strategy are you most interested in at this time now that you've heard? I'll give you a couple seconds. to fill out that poll. Awesome. Thank you so much for voting. So it looks like a lot of us are pretty interested in both. Um, and I think that that's the really important piece. And I think I appreciate you figuring um, for voting in this poll because it's not a one size fits all method. I can't tell you this is the best way to pay off your debt. This is the only way to pay off your debt because each of us are motivated by different things and we need to focus on that because that's the only way that we'll reach the ultimate goal of paying off all of our debt. Again, just a visual for you, maybe you're a visual person. The debt snowball focuses on the smallest amount of debt. So you're starting at the top there, making it larger as you go down. With debt avalanche, you're focusing on the highest interest rate. That's something that I wanna make clear, not the highest amount of debt, but the highest interest rate with debt avalanche. And we wanna show you with each of, each of these methods, a little bit goes a long way. You may say, looking at your budget, oh, I can only put an additional $20 a month towards this debt. That's enough. That is a good amount of money to put towards your debt. That's a great starting point. And maybe in the future, you can put additional funds. But right now, if all you have is just 20, 10, $15, that's still gonna make a difference. So we wanna show you that. So we have our $10,000 loan at 7% interest. Right now, our monthly payment is $200. The total interest paid over time will be $18.58 for this 60 month loan. So now we're going to put our 25 additional dollars from this month toward this loan, that's $25. Hopefully, some of us can find that in our budgets. We will decrease the amount of interest paid by about $250 over the life of the loan, and we will shorten the amount of time we spend paying on this loan by eight months, just because we're putting an additional $25 each month. So a little bit really does go a long way. Let's say, you know, 225, that's kind of a random payment. I think I can bump it to 250. The total interest paid over time will go down from the original about $400 that you're going to be saving over time in interest. I know a lot of things I'd like to do with $400 besides pay it to somebody else. <laughs> and you're going to be saving quite a bit of time by not paying on this loan. So we really wanted this example to show you that you're not having to upend your entire budget to make it happen. You can just put a little bit here and there, but will eventually save you money and save you time. Sarah, a question that we had uh, for the prior slide, how do you decide which strategy to use or which loan to put extra money into? Yeah, that's a great question. I appreciate that. Thank you, Magdalia. I think it really depends on your own personality. We have to know ourselves well to be able to pick the strategy that will work for us. Are you motivated each time you get to check something off your list um, and work towards that larger goal? Does that make you feel accomplished and move you forward in the process? Then maybe snowball method is best for you. Are you extremely motivated by saving money? <laughs> Are you, I know that me and my sister couldn't be more opposite in that department. I have got to have little wins along the way. And my sister is so motivated by saving money that she will spend hours looking for coupons and things of that nature. And that's just not my personality. So we have to know ourselves because, so let me give you an example of, possibly, you know, not knowing yourself as well. Let's say if I decided to choose avalanche method, because I was like, well, I do want to save money 
even if it may not be best for me. And so I start paying on the highest, highest interest rate loan. But let's say six months down the road, I haven't seen, I haven't seen my money touch the principal rate. And so I start giving up. I say, you know what? I'm going to use this money for something fun. I don't even care about paying off this debt anymore. I'm just going to use it for something fun because I haven't seen any little wins along the way just yet. And so that method would have then failed for me, which is okay. It's okay to fail and then to change a strategy over time. That's an important thing to know as well is that if you pick a strategy first and then realize this is not working for me, you can change to a new one. We don't set rules about, okay, avalanche, that's, that's the one you have to go with now. Um, so know that you can try each of these, maybe find one that you feel like works better for you, but it's important to know yourself and know how you're most motivated. Any other questions I can help answer, Migdalia? Those are all for now. Wonderful. Well, then I will turn it over to you um, to get us started with the second part of our presentation. Thank you. I mean, I just want to reiterate something that Sarah mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, I know we had some folks that joined a little bit later. We are going to email everyone the PowerPoint and some resources after the session. I would say probably by tomorrow the latest, so you'll have that information. And if you do have questions, you can continue to use the questions panel. And as we're talking about debt repayment, I, I want us to acknowledge that we understand that this can be stressful and this can take a toll on us on our on our day to day lives. And just remember that you know it is okay to talk about these things. It's understandable if you do feel stressed, but remember to take care of yourself. Um, Self care is very important, and money is one of the top stressors. So we understand that you know even in today's presentation, as much as we are trying to provide information that will be helpful and feel, help you feel encouraged. If after this you feel like, oh, I'm still, you know, I still need some additional help, there are additional resources that we will provide because we really want to support you throughout the way. And also, I'm glad to mention the piece that sometimes we're going to go into debt repayment and there will be times that you pay something off, life happens, and sometimes you have to add on some debt. And those situations, you know, it's a learning opportunity. And one of the biggest pieces to remember is to make sure that as you're doing all this debt repayment, as you go through all the examples that we have gone through today, it can be very in encouraging or you get what we could get very excited and try to put all the money that we can towards debt repayment, which is wonderful. However, if we don't have money put aside for that emergency fund, you could miss out on, you may end up in more debt later. And I've seen this, I've experienced this myself. You know, I've, I put on money towards paying off debt, then something happens and then uh, have to use that credit card again. So as we're gonna go talk about options, uh, even though it's not listed explicitly in, in any of these slides, uh, do remember that we, as we're talking about all of this, myself and Sarah, make sure that you have, that you're still putting money aside towards emergency funds. So if you have very low amount in your emergency savings and you have $50, put maybe 25 towards debt repayment and then the other 25 towards emergency fund. So always keep that in mind because uh, in these examples, you won't see that, but we want to make sure that you, you know that. So what exactly are our options other than our strat the different strategies that we talked about? One of them is to talk with your lender. Why would you want to talk with the lender? Well, a lot of times, and we have seen this, especially during the pandemic, that there are times that many companies, if not most, they tend to have a backup plan, a contingency plan. So what if a consumer is unable to pay, pay the debt? What would we do? And a lot of times they have either lower interest rates available, they have deferment options, they have all these different possibilities, but you will only find out if you reach out to them. The reason for this is most institutions, either companies or financial institutions, probably wouldn't be able to do this for everyone. Um, so they may not publicize it. However, if those are if people are in need, they will make these accommodations. Because of the pandemic, a lot more credit card companies and businesses have been much more upfront just because of the high volume of people that have been calling and have been in need of these resources. So one of the things is contact them. If you are 
you know, if you are in a situation, and I'll talk about refinancing shortly, but if you're in a situation that you're, you know, your interest rate is just really high, you you ran the number, the numbers, you figured out the total cost of that debt, and it gives you a little bit of a pain in the, your stomach, you're a little a little pain, you're like, oh, this is, I'm gonna pay this, it's gonna be a lot to pay off. Reach out. You don't lose anything. If at most they say no, well, at least that was one option that you went with. And if they say no, then that may give you more motivation to then try to take your debt somewhere else. Because if the company that holds your debt isn't trying to help you, there are others that would take on that additional debt. And how exactly would they do that? Well, that is exactly what is that what is refinancing. So when you refinance, and you'll see that in the next slide, when you refinance, you're taking the debt from one company and bringing it over to another. And I like example, so let's say that I have a loan with company A, let's say 10% interest rate and it's $10,000. I could go to company B and maybe they'll offer me 8% interest rate. And these rates are a little, are higher, it's just easier example, but they are higher than what they currently are in a lot of places. Uh, but if I go from company A, bring my $10,000 to company B, company B may be able to charge me less for that same exact debt amount. Why would I do this? Well, most people will do this because of the cash flow. It gives you high, uh, lower interest means you're gonna have lower monthly payment, which therefore means you're gonna have increased cash flow. And this is a really good piece, especially if you're trying to put additional funds toward debt repayment or trying to build your emergency fund or any other goals that you're working towards. There are some situations that you may decide, you know what, let's go a different, let's go back to that $10,000 at 10%. Maybe it's 10,000 at 10%, but it's a five-year loan. And maybe company B is making that five-year loan a seven-year loan. So maybe they're gonna give me two additional years and maybe the rates would be the same, but I may still choose to refinance because I may just need the lower monthly payment. So there are times that people may refinance and not, for the lower interest rate, that's usually the driving factor, but there are times that if you are in need of an increased cash flow, you may do that, uh, but do be mindful and run the numbers because it will cost you a little bit more. Uh, well, sometimes a lot more depending on those interest rates and the amounts. Uh, most of the refinancing process is pretty straightforward. You apply for a loan and there won't be fees for that application, uh, but you always wanna make sure that there are no prepayment penalties. What this means is let's say that you receive a bonus, you get a promotion, maybe you file your taxes and there's a refund or, or stimulus check that you receive and you wanted to apply that towards your debt. In that situation, you want to make sure that the lender will apply that towards the principal. Uh, typically they have to do the interest and then the principal, but you wanna make sure that there's no penalty for doing that. Most lenders, especially in Massachusetts, will not do that. But we know that not everyone has loans that are in Massachusetts, so I want to make sure that you're all aware of that. It is helpful to see the numbers. So on, the, on this slide, you'll see a chart that has a couple of different options for repayment. Let's say that I have a 10%, excuse me, a $10,000 loan with $200 monthly payment, and it's a term of 60 months or five years. And as of right now, I did my math, I went to our, I used our calculators or any other calculators that you're comfortable with. And I, re I realized the total cost of my debt or the total interest paid. In this case, it's $1,800. If I'm able to refinance, I can drop my interest rate in this example it's down to 5%. So I'm gonna save here two percentage interest, two percentage points, which essentially, Assuming I'm going to keep the same terms, so maybe I'll keep it an, a, as a five-year loan. Um, and this could be, because I get the question too, it's like, well, why would you go from five to five? Well, maybe it wasn't a five-year loan originally. Maybe it was a seven-year loan and you have the remaining term as five years. Uh, you could still choose to go with another five-year loan. But I go down to monthly payments of 189. So it's saving me a little bit. You know, not a huge amount of money monthly. But over the course of the loan, does save me a couple hundred dollars. And like Sarah said, we'd rather 
keep the extra $100 in our accounts, then give it to a lender. Or let's say that you continue to make that $200 monthly payment. So if you were comfortable making the $200 monthly payment before, you'll see here that if you continue to make the $200 payment, uh, Sarah, if you don't mind clicking onto the next one, um, if you continue to make the $200 monthly payment, then your total interest paid would be significantly lower. So you save a you know, lot more than originally, but the time piece. And someone asked earlier, well, how do you know which one to go with? Where do you apply the money? Or sort of how do you decide with a couple of these different things? Everyone's motivation is different. For me, I'll speak personally, I'm motivated by time. Um, obviously, I want to save as much money as possible. But here, knowing that I can be done three months earlier, that to me is like, oh, I just want to be done. Like, I, I want to hit that finish line faster. So that would be enough motivation for me to pay that additional $11 a month uh, versus here. It's like, oh, I'm only going to save like, you know, 100 bucks. That's not going to really motivate me as much as knowing, oh, I could be done three months earlier. Yeah, sign me up for that. I want to just be done. So this is where you have to figure out what's going to motivate you and be true to that. And if you do this and then switch, then it may not have motivated, motivated you as much as you thought. There are a lot of different things to consider before you refinance. Uh, one of the things I would always say, check to see if they offer discounts for automatic payments. Um, automatic payments are pretty straightforward. I think most of us have done this with most of the debt that we probably have. But if you aren't familiar, just by signing up to have the payments automatically withdrawn from your account, a lot of lenders will offer quarter of a percentage point, which may not seem like a lot. But as we saw with our calculators, a quarter of a percentage point over you know, five years, 10 years, or over a high loan amount, that can save us a lot of money or time or sometimes both. So you just want to see if that is an option because if you're paying every month on time and on the due date, might as well sign up to get that additional discount. Uh, other things to consider, as I mentioned earlier, most people will refinance for the benefit of the interest rate. Like that is why you wanna get that lower interest rate. So what exactly are some good rates or what are the rates that you should be looking at? Um, so depending on, let's say that you have, uh, I'll start with mortgages. Mortgages are really popular right now for refinancing. If you have a rate, anything over 4%, I would look into refinancing. And looking does not mean that you're running credit cards. Just go on different websites. Do, excuse me, you're not running your credit. Just go onto different websites and see. You can talk to mortgage loan originator. You can talk to financial institutions. Uh, mortgage rates right now are under four for most. If you are, if you have a uh, any, like a second line of, Equity, you can also look into that. Um, some rates right now are as low as 3% or uh, 2 percentage point, 2 plus percentage points. If you have a car loan, anything over 3%, I would look at refinancing. If you have credit card debt, honestly, with credit card debt, if you're paying a balance, if you're carrying a balance month to month and you have anything over in the double digits, I would look to see if it's worth doing uh, either a debt consolidation loan, there are also, in addition to debt consolidation loans, you could possibly do a, ba a credit card balance transfer. Uh, keeping in mind that if you were to do a credit card balance transfer, that original rate that they're going to offer you will usually be 0%, but it's 0% for a year. So you don't have, if you have a you know $10,000 that you're going to pay off and you do a balance transfer, that introductory rate is only available for that year. So we recommend doing the math, calculating how much you would have to pay monthly. So the end, the big one, try not to add additional debt to that credit card. Uh, so that way you're actually going to be able to save money and take advantage of that 0%. Uh, a lot of times with balance transfers, I tend to be cautious when, when suggesting it to people because some of us, it works really well. For some of us, it may not. If you're going to add additional debt to it and don't have a strategy going into place, so if you don't set up the monthly payments and say, okay, every month I'm going to have this amount taken out and I'm not going to add additional debt to the card, a lot of times people will take add on additional debt to that credit card and the credit the balance transfer can be, tends to have more of a negative effect on the individual because they 
can end up feeling defeated, like, oh, I did this, and in a year I thought I was going to pay this off, but I was unable to. So you just really need to know your personality. And there are a lot of different options. Sarah mentioned Green Path. I'll mention them again. Um, there are a lot of resources. So if you need help or you want to talk through these strategies, they are available. Uh, we also, I did see a question that just came in. Does HECU offer assistance with debt consolidation loans? Yes, uh, we do. So if you are interested in a debt consolidation loan, and uh, you can definitely contact our support, or if you're in Harvard Square, our Harvard Square branch is open if you wanted to come in and speak to someone. For folks that are not aware, a debt consolidation loan is when you take the debt that you have from multiple organizations, multiple companies, and you combine it into one. So you take those the debt, the debt from different companies, and let's say I owe 2,000 to company A, uh, 3,000 a company B and 5,000 a company C, so total 10,000. I can go, uh, and in this case, uh, the individual said credit union, so I can go come into our credit union and ask for a $10,000 loan to pay off company A, B, and C. What we would do, or other institution that you would choose to go with, they would take the, B, the bills that you have from the other companies and pay them directly, and now you owe that new debt, the $10,000 to the new company. Um, in our example, it was HUACU. Uh, so we do offer those and that uh, information of, about those are on our website, but you can definitely speak to someone if you have additional questions. Uh, keeping in mind uh, with the different debt repayment options, if you, you may lose the benefits that you had with previous credit, uh, previous loans, and uh, we get this question a lot right now federal student loans is the big one um, i am dropping in the chat where you can get announcements about the federal student loans right now the federal student loan rates are zero percent we do not recommend refinancing those because you're not going to get negative interest rate like no one's going to pay you right now and anything over zero percent would not be beneficial for folks right now so keeping them keep your loans with the federal student loans because, with the federal government because the rate is at 0%. Uh, we got the question, I got a couple of questions and we saw when you people registered as well, well, do we know what's happening? Uh, what's gonna, what, what, what will the rates be in the future with the federal government? Are they going to be forgiven? We don't know and I'll be honest, I don't think they know either. Um, I'm sure they're probably you know working on it, but we just don't know. So instead, Keep those federal loans with the federal government and let's see what happens because if you choose to take the loans from the federal government into a private lender, you're going to lose those federal benefits and you won't be able to qualify. So if they decide to in three more months and maybe next year they decide to drop all of the rates by 2% and you've refinanced, you would lose those benefits. This is very similar to if you're renting a place and let's say that that place that you're renting has a really good dishwasher and then you go rent a new place. You move out of the old one, go into a new place. The new place does not have a dishwasher. You cannot go back to the old place that you rented and use that, that dishwasher. That benefit is no longer available to you. The same thing will happen whether you do a debt consolidation, whether you do a balance, a credit card balance transfer or any other form of refinancing. You lose those original benefits. So you wanna consider that before you bring it from company A to the other company. Um, and the credit score, the higher your credit score, the lower the interest rate that you will that you typically will get offered, which means more savings to you. Because of that, it may make sense if your rate is not in the, is not as high as it could be, or if you're sort of on the cusp that you could probably do a couple of things to push your rate your your credit score higher. Sometimes it may be worth to try to build up the credit score before refinancing. And not in all cases, uh, there are some times that it makes sense, sometimes it does not. And again, I'll give you the green path information. They're accredited credit counselors and they can help with much more specific information to see if in your situation it makes sense to try to build the credit score or if it doesn't. But also keep in mind too, you can refinance multiple times, and I've seen this happen where individuals make, maybe your credit score isn't as high as it could be, but you refinance because you can save a good amount. The, and then in a couple of months, you could refinance again. There isn't a limit as to how often you can refinance. 
it is a process. Uh, so it's, you know, sometimes you just don't want to go through that. And it could impact your credit score negatively if you're doing it very frequently. But if I refinance today and then six months from now, there's a better rate or my credit score increases to allow me to get a better rate, I may be able to refinance again and have very minimal impact to my credit score. We know that we went through a lot of different topics and everyone situation will be different. Maybe we went through some of these and you're like, you know what, I get Avalanche, I get Snowball, but I just, my budget does not allow for those extra funds. So that's not really going to help me. Or maybe your credit score isn't quite where it needs to be. So you can't do the refinancing right now. Um, maybe, so maybe you can't do the refinancing. Maybe you looked at a couple of different options and you're like, you know what, I can't do that either. There are other options, including a debt management plan. So what exactly is a debt management plan? I like to start with what it's not. It just helps me explain it a little bit better. So what a debt management plan is not, it's not debt settlement. Let's go back to that $10,000 loan that I had. I would still pay off that $10,000. So I wouldn't settle, which means, and settlement, you usually will hear it with uh, credit card offers, or excuse me, you'll hear this often um, in com uh, commercials. A lot of, a lot of times you hear them on the radio or late at night, but what they do is a, a company will tell you not to pay off the debt. They'll say, don't pay off the debt because after so many months or so many years, the company will, the, the lender will tell you that they'll settle. So instead of paying 10,000, you'll only have to pay 7,000. While that is true, it could have a very negative impact on your credit score. And it could also, and I'll, I'll go back. The reason I'll have a negative impact on your credit score is that you're not making payment. So by not making payment, your payment history is 35% of your credit score. So by not making payment, your credit score is gonna drop significantly and it can impact your ability to borrow in the future. Another reason is, let's say you, know, you do end up settling. Credit score isn't all that lenders look at. They will also pull your credit report to see your credit history. And if they pull your credit history and see that you've settled other debts, they may decide not to lend to you. They may have a policy in their underwriting that they don't lend or that they may charge you a higher rate if you have settlements. Uh, so it's not always, you know, there are other options and that is where a debt management plan comes in. So a debt management plan, what that is, a company, in, in our case, we work with Greenpath, they will have agreements with lenders. Uh, so let's think of the bigger banks or uh, st uh, box stores. They may have already an agreement with them that says if an individual goes on a debt management plan with Greenpath, we will bring down our interest rate to X percentage. So you're still going to pay that $10,000, but maybe you're not paying it at 20 something percent. Maybe you can actually pay it at 15% or 4%, whatever that may be. Uh, but really the pieces that makes a debt management plan different and why we do recommend it for individuals where the other options we discussed aren't helpful is that they have financial counseling. So you're going to have someone that's gonna work with you to figure out what is the best strategy. They're gonna essentially manage the process for you. But with that, there is a cost. It's $10 per account. If I have just two accounts, it would be $20. If I have eight accounts, it would not be 80. There is a, a state maximum in mass of 75. So it would be up to $75. And essentially what happens is I would call someone at Green Path, tell them my situation. They would run some numbers for me, tell me based off of who you owe money to, it looks like we can bring down your rates to this amount. If I agree to do this, I would set up an account with Green Path where I would deposit month a monthly payment let's say two hundred dollars and they would then take that 200 and pay my credit excuse me pay my debt on my behalf they're again managing my debt hence the name debt management plan uh, in the next slide you'll see an example of just sort of what this could look like and what the savings could be and this just me this individual they were paying interest chart the interest charges that they were paying monthly was about $573. They were also paying on over limit charges. And then their monthly payment was only 
going $75 of their monthly payment was only going to principal. And this is where we see often that it could be honestly discouraging when you were making payment. It's like, oh, but why if I'm making payment? Is my debt not going down? Why is this not happening? And a lot of times it's because the interest is so high that first the payment is applied towards interest and then it's applied towards the remaining principal. Uh, in this example on the plan with Green Path, because of the change in the interest rate and because the money is being sent to Green Path, hence the agreement by the lender to reduce the, the interest rate, more of the payment is going towards the principal. So this individual is paying, you know, $484 is going towards principal. The interest rate is lower. So now less of the interest rate is going towards that. This just this is an example. Um, they're also saving they're 40 months sooner. I know it's in a little bit of smaller font up top, but this is just an option. Again, if you if none of the others are working, just something else to know that it is available to you. On the next slide, you'll see the information for Green Path. I have also dropped it in the chat previously, and you'll get it in the email. I did get a question about Green Path with IRS debt. I'm not quite sure, and particularly because of I actually would recommend contacting the IRS first. I don't think they would have something with Green Path. Um, the IRS is very specific as to the payment plan that you can have with them. Uh, I know that they have a couple of different options with them. I think Green Path could probably help with the budgeting, excuse me, the, yes, the budgeting, the, the figuring out, helping you with that piece. But I do not believe that they would be allowed to send payments to the IRS, uh, but I am not 100% sure. But that is something you, you I would recommend maybe speaking with the IRS first and then contacting Green Path to see what options they can offer to help. I know we talked about a lot of different things. Um, as I'm chatting and finishing up here, if there are additional questions, please drop them in the chat and also know that we do have a very quick survey. We re review the survey results. Uh, Sarah will drop that in the chat so that you have it, uh, but you can go onto our website and complete that survey before you log off. We would highly, highly appreciate it. Um, it just helps us improve. We know that there's a lot that we went through and it can be a little bit of overwhelming. So I recommend keeping in mind, it, even though this is challenging, try to stay motivated. Know that there's a lot that is happening and try to stay motivated, informed. We have a blog, find an accountability partner, but probably the biggest thing I would say is take action. Today, before the seminar, the webinar ends, take a moment to decide where, you know, what do you want to do today? What is one thing that you could do today before, uh, excuse me, what is one thing that you could do today before logging off of the webinar? What's one thing that you could decide to do today? And I'm going to uh, turn it over to you, Sarah. I don't know if there are any other questions or anything else you want to mention. Yep, just, um, I did drop that survey link and you can find it here at huecu.org slash survey. Um, and then there was another question that came in, Magdalia, um, and that is, how do you balance paying off debt with putting money, money towards retirement? Which should you do first or how do you do both at the same time? Sorry, Magdalia, could you hear that question? Sorry about that, Sarah. I think I lost connection there for a moment. Um, would you mind repeating? Sorry. Of course, sorry about that. So um, somebody was just wondering, how do you balance the two priorities of paying off debt while also possibly saving for retirement? Or should you just stop saving for retirement and pay off all your debt? Oh, great question. So for that one, I would actually say there are a couple of different calculators um, and I know through Harvard we have a, a lot of good tools and there's a new one that they just that um, just came out of the, the HR office uh, I forget the name of the tool but you can actually use a couple of different calculators to see the benefit of saving now for retirement and with retirement the benefit is that you have time on your side the more that you can save now the better you're going to be in the long term with debt I'm not saying not to pay it off I, I, I would always just 
emphasize that one of the priorities should always be saving, especially for tomorrow. With debt repayment, if I had to choose between both, I would sort of split and try to do as much as I can um, in in saving for retirement and look for other ways to, to save on debt. So that could be a couple of what things we said before. See if you can refinance, see if you can bring up your credit score so that you owe less, see if uh, maybe you can cut other expenses. But I would always, always encourage you to save for retirement. We do a lot of these presentations and we've yet to talk to someone who said, I saved too much for retirement. We Unfortunately, one of the things that we see often is that people just aren't saving as much as they need to for retirement. And as much as I want to be optimistic, and I am optimistic that let, you know the future will get better and hopefully all of us will have more income. The reality is that we can't just depend on that and we have to do the, the work now. So long way of saying that I would highly encourage to still prioritize saving for retirement, knowing that with debt repayment, it may cost you a little bit more, that interest, but you're still in the long term going to be able to have more uh, uh, net worth if you're able to put towards retirement now versus delaying it. Thanks, Magdalia. Another question came in. Um, seems that as I pay off my debt and close small unneeded store cards, credit cards, my credit score is going down. Are there any ideas for how to deal with this? I would contact GreenPath directly uh, because they can pull up the rest of your credit report and see what other what options or suggestions they might have for you particularly. Closing accounts can have a negative impact on your credit score if they were an account that you've had for many years. Uh, however, that doesn't mean for others like, oh, I should never close an account. It depends. I've closed accounts that I opened when I was 18, but I have other accounts that are still open or have been longer, so it didn't have much of an impact on my credit score. But I would contact GreenPath specifically because they are accredited credit counselors and they can take a look at your specific situation and recommend things based off your credit report uh, versus us. We, we, you know, there could be other factors, other things that you could do to help bring up your score, but Green Path would be the best uh, starting point. Thank you for that. Thanks, Magdalia. It looks like those are all the questions we have so far, but we do have a couple of more minutes. Um, Danielle, is there anything that you'd like to say or wrap up with um, before we move on? I would just encourage people to really take advantage of the resources at the credit union and at Green Path. And, you know, I would echo some of what Sarah and Magdalia said earlier, that this is probably not the most fun thing to do in one's free time, but that there's really a ton of information and help to be had um, and that our finances can be better than they are if we take advantage of all of that. So thank you both for sharing all this with us. Thank you, Danielle, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, there's one last question that came in. Are there any special opportunities during COVID? Um, at the credit union, uh, we have lowered a good number of our rates. So if um, you do need a personal loan, we have lowered our rates there. And we have just come out with a brand new um, credit card. So if you are interested in getting a credit card, we have come out with a new one um, during this time. And it's just a 1.5% um, cash back card. So if you're interested in either of those, we're happy to talk about those at any point in time. And you can find all of that information on our website. And one last question that I think everybody should hear. Do you need a credit union membership to talk with Green Path? The answer to that is no. Because you're a part of our community already, um, all you need to do is just let us let Green Path know that Harvard Credit Union sent you, and that way they can um, track it just with the right credit union. But no, you do not need to be a member. You're a part of our community, whether you're a member or not. So you are more than welcome to use Green Path if you are not a member at the credit union. Magdalia, that is all that I have. If there's anything that you would like to um, reiterate or say before we close out, I'd be happy to hear that. Thank you so much I, uh, just for everyone for joining and we hope to see you at another presentation. I will drop the link so that you can register if interested in any, any others. And thank you everyone again. Hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week and enjoy the summer-like weather we're gonna have. <laughs>